So, Tolly, what bubble are we popping today? I don't know, Carla. Let's find out. I'm Carla, and this is another episode of Popping the Bubble. How you doing, Carla? I'm good. I just ate, I'm fed, and I'm really happy, and I'm just excited to get this episode in. How are you, Tali? I'm doing great. You know, Thanksgiving break, been spending some time with the fam, waking up at 3 p.m. every day. Same here. A blessing. (laughs) A blessing in disguise. No word. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for this episode. Yeah, we have some really exciting stuff planned for you, but before we get into it, I want to say, if you haven't listened to our last episode yet, pause this right now and go give it a listen. Yeah, guys, this is our fifth episode. We're coming into a new series. We're super excited about this one. Um, yeah. We already have four episodes out. That's crazy. That four is episodes. Crazy. It's been, what, two months? Two months. Wow. I get so, like, giddy. Like, it's still, like, like, I don't think I fully understand, you know? Like, I don't think I fully comprehend what we've been doing. Yeah, me either. It hasn't registered yet, so I'll let y'all know when it does. Might be a while. Might be a while. Maybe, like, <laughs> episode episode 20, I'll be like, oh, my gosh, we made a podcast. <laughs> um but yeah if you guys haven't listened to our last episode or if you did you know today we're going to be talking about pop culture more importantly representation yeah so that's like specifically today in movies and tv shows we're going to be talking about what good representation looks like versus what bad representation looks like also i'd like to apologize I said it's the representation for me so many times in that last podcast. <laughs> if, if, I apologize. I sincerely apologize. I might do a little... I might do it again in this one, but I wanted to apologize for the next one. Previous it's okay. Point. It's okay. We, we... It's all good. Don't worry about it. It's the representation for me. <laughs> we haven't even, how can you say it already? We haven't even started talking about it. Because I love this topic. I love talking about representation. Because it's needed, so. I agree. Agreed. So, let's get into it. So, I think we should start with bad representation. Because I feel like people always start with the good news. But I want to end this podcast on the good news. Right. Okay. Yeah, I can get with that. So, let's talk about the bad. What do you have in mind? Well, you know, when thinking about representation, you're thinking about, you know, representing different groups of people, different lifestyles and different things like that, especially in TV shows, um, especially in like movies and TV shows, which we're constantly watching. Like I know, like I watch a lot of TV shows and a lot of movies and stuff. And one of the things I've definitely been looking at is the type of representation in the type of shows I'm watching. So me and Carla made a list of what bad representation and what good representation looks like. And just one of the bad representations, which I've constantly been seeing, is the Black best friend as a side character. Oh my god, it is so common. And every single show, they think that just having one Black character is enough for the entire Black community. That that one character represents every person of color. And so... And then the only reason that they exist is to help the backstory or to help the main character. And if you guys think we're lying, which we're not, by the way, shh, come on. Um, here are some shows me and Carla have watched, or movies, which have definitely done this. And some shows that you guys have definitely watched. Clueless, which is like a great movie. Her friend is Black and is on the side. We don't know anything about her. We don't know She's literally just there, and I get it. It's like a movie and stuff, but that's so common. It's like, 
we've seen this already. We want to we wanna know more about the side character, especially when she's Black and we want to know how she's doing through high school. Why can't we, why can't the movie give her like five minutes, 20 minutes? Right. Another one I can think of is Riverdale. I know a lot of people watch the show. I do too. Um, and it just makes me so mad because I actually kind of like the show, but it, it makes me upset that I don't know if you guys know about, um, I think it was like Josie and the Pussycats or something like that, that they were there for like the first or second season. And there were, I think, three or four girls of color and they were in like this band, this thing. But then eventually they just stopped with them and they just kind of cut off their storyline and was like, screw you. We don't, you know, want you in this anymore. And then they had Tony, which is um, the girlfriend of one of the other characters. And the only reason that she exists is basically to like be like her only story arc is surrounding her girlfriend which (laughs) makes me mad because i was promised more background information on her character and her development and we got none of that so and i don't watch riverdale but carla was telling me is it josie that's her name josie got a spinoff but right she wasn't the main character it was What's her name? Lucy Hill? Lucy Hill. Yeah, it was, I think, Lucy Hill, Katie, Katie or, something. or something, who got her own show, and then Josie coming out of Riverdale was the side character best friend, and it's like, here we go again, the side black best friend. So, you know, all we're saying is, like, when you're watching these shows, just pay attention to that, because that's a lack of representation, and, I mean, it doesn't mean that the show is terrible, but, like, look at Vampire Diaries. Ooh. Bonnie, Bo- Bonnie Bennett, to this day. They did my girl Bonnie Bennett so dirty. Like, it, she, for those of you who have not watched Vampire Diaries, which you should watch, it's long, but I mean, if you're into vampires and witches and stuff, you should definitely watch. But Bonnie Bennett is like, well, she's really the only black person in the friend group. Mostly, she's the only yeah. black she's person the only in the friend consistent- group. The only consistent, consistent black, black person in the in the friend group, and she sacrifices her family, sacrifices her life multiple times, and she's still looked at as a side character. Like she doesn't even get a happy ending. It's it's just like, I mean, it's, it's like like I said before, these characters like their only use is to support the main characters, and I think that just when that reflects back into the real world, it just paints the wrong image to kids and people who see themselves reflected in that character. Like, there's no substance. They're only there to serve the main character. And let me just say, as a Black woman, I am not here to serve nobody. I am not the side character. I am the main character, the only character. So, yeah, that's what that's another form of bad representation. Um, the other one we had was, I think this is a really big one in like, like just entertainment industry and stuff, but not casting people who are actually black or who are LG or who identify as LGBTQ for specific roles. So one of the movies that came out 2018, 19, around that time, Around that time, The Hate You Give, um, if you guys haven't seen it, I definitely recommend. The main character, Amanda Stanberg. Um, she plays Star. She plays Star. Um, and the book, if you read the book, which I also recommend you do better, the book is definitely better than the movie. The character is described as dark-skinned. And um, for those of you who don't know Amanda, she is not dark-skinned. And this isn't to put shame on her or to, like, put her down. Them, because them. Put them. Sorry, that's her pronoun. Them. This isn't to put them down, but this is to, um, it's just to show. It's just, I don't know how to say this. Carla, back me up. Okay, <laughs> I think, okay, here's where I'm going with this. I think that this is all about colorism, is that we see characters who are described as being dark-skinned or who are described, you know, to be looking a certain way. And then when it comes to casting for these roles, they always pick somebody who's like less, who conforms more to the Eurocentric ideals of beauty and stuff like that. So Amanda Stenberg, they were cast in this role as somebody who's supposed to be dark skinned. And if you have seen the movie, um, their character 
star, her entire family, like, they're all darker than her. They're a lot darker skinned. If you look at her brothers and the people who play her mom and her dad, and then you see her and she's just light skinned. Like, not, not too light skinned, but doesn't, you know, exactly portray that image. And I can think of another example where Amanda was cast in The Hunger Games, which is another popular movie that a lot of people watched. Um, they were in that movie, and their character was a girl who, in the book, is described as being dark-skinned as well. But then, in the movie, when it came to casting, it was Amanda, who is a lot lighter than what, you know, was depicted in the, in the book. And so, I think that this just happens way too often. And this isn't to put anyone down. It's just, especially for me as a dark-skinned, I thrive on representation like if you guys heard me in that last episode talking about grand army for that little few snippet like it it's really comforting to see people on tv the things i watch that look like me so when i read a book and it says dark skinned girl or 4c hair like i want to see that when the movie comes out i mean don't get me wrong the movie was great and the actors played great, but it also would have been nice to see it portrayed just like the book was portrayed. And, you know, movies and books aren't always the same thing. But what I'm trying to get through is, like, a lot of the time, these representations are done because the director or whoever's in charge of these movies and shows decides to go left instead of right. And it's, it hurts because it's like, well, I'm, I'm betting you there was thousands of other people who auditioned, thousands of other people who were great. And... You know, she got the part and she did it very well, but that's also something we have to think about, like, who else auditioned for this role? Who else could have been that representation that we needed? I think that this also speaks to just the industry as a whole. I don't think it's just one person or one group or one organization. I think it's just the entire industry of Hollywood or whatever you want to call it, even the music industry. It's always, you know, they're selling what they think will... uh, I think gain the most profit or be marketed the best and so i don't for some reason that's not dark-skinned people some stupid reason that makes absolutely no sense to me um and so i think that they're just you know doing that and it's all about i think colorism too and just when you're gonna have a person of color it's gonna be a lighter skinned person of color who doesn't represent the entire community um this isn't just like um like for black people or people of color like I also said this is for like LGBTQ people where there's a movie and it's about like a gay or transgender person and then the actor is not gay or transgender it's like we understand you're trying I get it actors are supposed to play different roles but especially in the time where we're trying to get everyone to understand that this is a new generation. These times are changing. When directors and people who are in charge are not advocating with roles that they're creating and not giving these people these opportunities to be a voice for this group, to be a voice for their people and for everyone around us so they see that representation, it's it's really annoying. It's like, you know there was some people out there that you could have casted better than this. And it's like, again, like I'm not, I feel like I'm gonna get hate, but I'm not trying to like belittle or anyone or put anyone down, but I'm just like, this is a real thing. And like a lot of the movies we watch and we're like, this person isn't even gay or like transgender. Like I'm I'm telling you, there are transgender actors who want roles, who want to do these things, and then they get shut down. And then it's like you couldn't find one to play one. Like I've, I'm telling you, there's millions of them out there wanting to be a voice and wanting to be a representation. And when they come and they do their audition, you guys send them out and then you pick someone else who, does, who doesn't even know anything. It's not, it's, I honestly think it's different when you can relate to that person instead of like studying for it. Like it's completely different. It's a completely different effect and people, the audience who's watching feels it and everybody else feels it. I agree. And I kind of want to like, talk like you just you just said something really well like when you cast somebody who actually identifies with the role I think that just ups the quality of all of it and it just it just makes it that much better because you have people who actually 
understand and identify with the role, and we know for a fact that they can play it that much better than somebody who can't. And I kind of also want to go back to, like, the whole LGBTQ thing and, and, like, the representation that they get in shows. And this kind of relates to the kind of representation that people of color get. It's because in these shows, if they are, if their character in the show is part of the LGBTQ plus community or um, if they're black, their entire story is, is faced around that. It's, it's all based on their identity. Or it's, yeah, or it's like pain and and discomfort, discomfort. Right. Like like uh like a lot of the movies lately have been like coming out the hood and you know fighting against gun violence and being better than my surroundings. Right. That's not representation because that's not everybody. I did not come out the hood. I live in the I live in the woods in Pennsylvania. I live in the middle of the woods in Pennsylvania in a nice house with all my family members. I've never been in any gun violence. And a lot of the movies I've been watching, they're the same thing. Lack of representation. Not everyone comes out of the hood. Not everyone is struggling. Not everyone I have two parents. I you know, it's rare that you see that, but most of the times when there's a black family in a movie, the mom is a junkie. The dad is the dad left and never came back. That's not realistic. That's not realistic at all. I understand you're trying to show the difficulties, but that's not everyone. You know, you have to keep an open mind and you have to be like, this is not what everyone faces. Not everyone is struggling to get a meal at the end of the day. And it's not to say that we shouldn't show that because we should, you know, people learn when they see things and they believe that these things are happening, but then it's also like you're lacking, like you're lacking on the other side and you need to do both. Right, and it's when, like, you have all these stories that... It's not to say that the story is about, you know, people over, people of color overcoming struggles and, like, coming out stories aren't important. They are. But when every single story with a person who is of color or in the LGBTQ plus community is based on that, it kind of takes away from the nuance of the character and the people in those community, and it doesn't do justice to them because people in the LGBTQ plus community are so much more nuanced. Like, I don't... I'm speaking personally from this. Like, I'm more than just a gay a person. I'm I'm more than that. Like, I have interests. I have things. And I, my entire life isn't centered around that. And so I want that to be reflected in the movies and the shows that I watch that are about people who I identify with and characters who I see myself reflecting in. And I think that when you only base the stories around this trauma and everything it gives the wrong image me growing up watching tv shows where there's gay characters and seeing them you know struggle with homophobia and being so afraid of of coming out to their parents i get that it's important but can we have a story where parents are accepting of their kid because me seeing that growing up that just discouraged me i was afraid and so i want to see more because as as hard as important as it is to tell the hard stories i think it's equally as important to tell the stories where people are open and accepted and where they're, they're so much more nuanced than just the one piece of their identity that people thinks define them. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. Like, I don't, I don't know. I feel like I've, the only time there's ever been a good amount of representation or, no, yeah, the only time there's ever been a good amount of representation lately I've been seeing is black sitcoms like back in the day like we're talking about like Moesha and Sister to Sister where like they were having fun and living life and not everything was surrounded by the color of their skin you know and it's especially in this generation where you know we're fighting for social justice and we're fighting for that representation sometimes it's just so like heavy like some of these shows are only so targeted on like being black and I need to do this for my people. And sometimes it's like, yeah, but I like to sing too. You know, I like school. I like arts. I like to dance. I I like to cook. It's it's like, we get it. But we also like, not everyone is fighting all the time. You know, at the end of the day, we are normal human beings. There are other things besides the color of our skin. We, We like to do other things. Like when you look at a main character who's white, they got vp going on they're in the dance the spring the recital and then you see the main you see the side black character and it's like i'm going to a protest and this is literally like i'm it's not even direct to anyone but it's just like these are some of the things you see all the time and it's really lacking and it's 
at this point, I, at this point for me, it's like, I don't want to watch a show where I'm just going to be like, okay, there's no substance, no representation. I don't want to watch anymore. I'm kind of done with it. And that's not to say that we don't think that the stories with those struggles are important because we do think they are. But like we said, when everything is about that, it just takes away from the nuance. And I just, I want to see a coming of age story about a, a black girl who's, you know, struggling to get a boyfriend or girlfriend and, you know, going out and having adventures with their friends. Like, why can't we just get a nice, like, teen sob story? Something or like not that. even struggling. I want a movie where there's a right. happy beginning, happy middle, right. happy end. There you go. Make that, it happy. Is that too much to ask for, Hollywood? Not too much. Do, does somebody have to die? Somebody has to be shot for us to, for us to have a good movie? I honestly, like, I want to see more... I want to see more happy movies. I generally want to see more happy movies. I want to see more black casting. I want to see more LGBTQ castings. I want to see those things. I don't want to. I don't want to watch a basic rom com or somebody's got. I I want to see adventure. Go to right. planet Mars for all I care. I want to see adventure. Shoot, go to Harvard. Go. Go to Howard. Travel the world. Go. Go travel the world. Go do something like, have kids. Settle down. Move to the suburbs. Like. And oh God, I, I honestly think like it doesn't have to be hardships all the time. It really doesn't. Yeah. I I speaking from an I perspective, I've I I've had my hardships and I'm what? I'm 16 now. I've had a little struggle at the beginning um around now, but it's like it's not that bad. It's not. I'm not trying to run away from something every day honestly most of the time i'm just chilling i'm trying to sing i'm trying to dance i'm trying to spend time with friends and family not all the time is chilling watching girl meets world in a dorm room at boarding school exactly and even then that show doesn't have the representation so anyways but this is also i know tali you might get mad at me for saying this i know you love netflix but i have a little quarrel with netflix because I feel like they always cancel the wrong shows. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, no. how many times... Okay, um, this may be an unpopular opinion, but how many shows like Emily in Paris do we need? Why did Emily in Paris get another season and then pose? Yeah, you didn't know that? Yeah, look at your face. They, they gave it another season, but then they canceled Pose. The show, I think, on Netflix were probably the most LGBTQ and... represent the most representation for the lgbtq and the black and colored community in general wait emily and paris got a second season yeah and it did like this like that quick when netflix cancels netflix has um, and i am i'm biased here not to ban the show or any to bash the show but that show was terrible (laughs) and i watch everything we're not talking about it we're not talking about that right now we're talking about like what is so good about the show and i've seen pose and pose is so good if um we're just going to be dropping some really good recommendations so if y'all are listening just write them down but pose is really good and i learned a lot of things and i've been doing my research and what other show did they cancel they canceled one day at a time okay you know what i take it back Mm. they canceled one day at a time and if you guys haven't seen it that show was so good and I don't know why they canceled it because it had LGBTQ representation. It had Latinx representation. Latinx representation. Oh my god! You know, I I loved that show so much when it first came out. I was like, this is the first time that I see like represent. Like you talk, Tali, you talk about what you how how you felt when you saw Grand Army and Haitian representation. That's literally how I felt when I first watched One Day at a Time, seeing a a gay like afro latina not afro she was an afro latina but i'm an afro latina but seeing a gay like person in the latin latinx community like have that representation and be the main character of a show i was like shoot like is this i was like i am elena alvarez i feel you like it, that yeah, was the Ale- first time that was the first time i felt like represented in a tv series and then they were like okay couple of seasons cancel like yeah netflix do better they also canceled i don't remember what it's called on my mind right now but it's about this girl and she's like a smart genius and she's a scientist and with an e no not that one not that one but they canceled that too 
And that was, you see, all I'm gonna say, okay, okay. Call me a hypocrite. I take it back. I Netflix has its days, but honestly, like a lot of the shows, I can't remember what it's called, but it's a really good show. And it's like, it's exactly what we're talking about. It's just laughter and a girl trying to get to high school when she's a smart genius. And I can't remember the name, but. <sighs> they also canceled Everything Sucks, which was about um, high school girl in the 80s coming to terms with her sexuality they canceled i'm not okay with this they canceled teenage bounty hunters which it's a wound that's still open for me like they have canceled every single show with good like lgbtq plus representation and just good representation in general and i'm like i'm still mad about it because how are you just gonna cancel every show that offers representation to the communities where they don't get it that often and so I'm starting to see a common trend, Tali. I don't know about you. That's why I have some problems with Netflix. Although I, I'm not gonna lie. Like I be on Netflix all the time, but why they gotta cancel all the good shows and then give shows like Emily in Paris like eight seasons and then let it get dry and then people are still like watching it. Guys, that show was truly terrible. And again, I'm not trying to. Be- no. I watch everything. So for me to tell you on this podcast that that show was terrible, no substance whatsoever. Say it I with said your what full I said. chest. Say I that said with what your I full said. chest. I said what I said and I meant it. No substance. Like that show. So anyways. Anyways. Yeah. But, you know, just, just think about that. Next time you watch a show, like question the representation, like what groups – are or aren't being represented in this show like what and why think about why and then you'll realize that it's a whole system that it's manufactured to work this way and it's all about profits and money and the people who are selling that don't happen to be people of color um and you'll then you'll have a problem with all of it which i'm starting to right now how will and paris get a new season before grand army excuse me Anyway, it don't matter. It's not that good. So who watching this show? I said what I said, and I'm sticking to it. I said what I said. With your anyways, trust. now that we've given you guys some a lot to think about, a lot to think about next time you watch our favorite shows, we're gonna give you some good representation because I think a lot of the times we talk about how this is going sideways, but we never be like, yeah, but they're doing okay on this side. We, we've talked about this show already, but Grand Army is literally so good. God, if you ha- haven't, please go watch it. Like, it is so good. We need another season. I will say this with my chest. If we don't get a season two, I will march to Netflix myself and direct season two. I don't even care anymore. I'll go with because, you. because if they take away that representation from me, I will cry and cry and cry for a week. No mercy. It's okay. so good. Like, I don't even want to spoil it. And I'm not going to spoil it for those of you who haven't watched yet. And again, what are you doing? Pause this podcast and go watch it. Um, but it's so good. Like, although it tackles on some very hardships of, you know, being in a public high school, specifically in New York, public high schools in New York or any region where there's a lot of kids, you know, you don't really focus in the show focuses on like certain students and certain trials and it talks about LGBTQ, it talks about immigration and how that's like, and as an immigrant, especially a Haitian immigrant, not everything they said, I was like, yes, I understand. But a lot of the times I was like, I understand. I've been in that position where money was tight, but we made a way. I've been in that position where I had to sacrifice things. And you see it a lot of the times and Honestly, I'm going to keep talking about this show forever. So yeah, I might as well watch it because why not? <laughs> yeah, another good show is All American. I know that's pretty popular. A lot of people seem to like it, but I think it's just so it, it's, it's great. Like it has representation. It's not just a black kid from the hood. It's like wealthy black kids and, you know, just showing the I keep saying this word, the nuance, <laughs> the nuance, because it really is like just the, the spectrum spectrum that's a good word 
the spectrum of people I think spectrum is just a great word for everything, but great word. <laughs> but it's just like a, it's it is a spectrum because you know, like Tali said, not every black person came from the hood. Not every black person is struggling. Not every person in the LGBTQ plus community is struggling with their identity. Like, and it's not to say, like I said, that those who are the stories of those who are aren't important. But it's just those are the stories that are showed the most. And so I think All American is just overall a good show. Um, it has so much representation for everything, like it's intersectionality and and everything. It's just football. I mean, if you, I mean, football. You know, if you like football, high school drama, black people, which I'm rooting for black people all day, every day. Period. Um, there you go. It's a perfect show. All American. It's on Netflix. It's season. What season are they on? Season now? three coming out soon. Soon. So there you go. You got time to catch up. Dude, we're not getting paid for this. We need to stop doing so much promo. <laughs> Anyways, next show. Netflix, is... where's our check? <laughs> next show, we already talked about it, but it's Pose. And again, it's really good. And it talks about LGBTQ and all of those different spectrums. Spectrum is really a good word, actually. I right. Like That's it. what I said. Yeah. But yeah, we recommend that. And Insecure, it's on HBO. Yes. Issa Ray has done it again, and will always do it. You know, those little 20-minute segments I get each episode, I am fulfilled because my life is fulfilled with Issa Rae, okay? She be bringing the Black community. And, I mean, it's not even about high school. Anybody can watch the show. They talk about, for all my adults listening out there, if we have any, I don't really know. But if we do, they talk about, postpartum depression with black women and I was like that episode I was like that's not talked about a lot in shows when do you ever see that talked about they talk about that they talk about therapy when do you see black people talking about therapy that needs to be talked about more and they do normalize normalize black people going to therapy I go to therapy it's very very helpful every Thursday morning thank you um all I'm saying is insecure on HBO because that that show shows so much representation and of course they have the little drama because no show doesn't have drama but it's another source of representation and then there's also sex education it's a little on the mature side now disclaimer teenagers disclaimer we're not saying go get your education from there we're saying it's a good source of representation representation don't get I would just like to say, please don't get your education from there. Please, please. We are not responsible. No, I think we need to make this clear, Carla. We don't need no, anyone do. telling us. Yeah. We don't need anyone telling us we sent them anywhere to do that. No, we're just saying these are good shows for representation if you just need some representation, okay? It's all about the representation for me. Yes. So I'm going to give it. Yes, okay. Yeah, that. <laughs> And then I already said this, but one day at a time, I literally just, oh, just talking about that show. I'm gonna, nope, okay. But such a good show. I just love the representation. You know, it holds a special little place in my little heart for the, for, you know, just that. Um, Dear White People is also a really good one. Oh, yes. It's on Netflix. And, ooh, guys, let me tell y'all a little story. When me and Carlo were coming up with our podcast name, obviously the best, popping the bubble, like who knows, no. like, come on, merch coming out soon, not really. Don't say um, that, don't say that, because <laughs> then we're going to have to execute, don't make any promises that we did not talk about. Um. Anyways, <laughs> me, I literally said this, I said, Carlo, we should name our podcast Dear White People, because... That show, I think when that show came out, I was like, why would they name a show Dear White People? And then you watch the first episode and you're like, ah, got it. And then you watch the next episode and you're like, ah, got it. So Dear White People focuses on like, um, it focuses on college and these cho- these teens in college. And it focuses on different students and it talks about, well, it talks about so many things. The spectrum is there it's the so, spectrum again the spectrum, spectrum for us can we, can we coin so, that word? i don't the think spectrum. we can i don't think we can I but i want to but um we definitely recommend watching it 
um netflix if you're listening we would like a shout out because we really we're really putting you out here netflix we got beef with you but we also appreciate you so take it or leave it it's what we got for you (laughs) And um, this go one watch, it, it's, go watch Teenage Bounty Hunters. It's canceled, Carla. Let it go. I'm not letting it go. I'm sorry, but I can't. That show was so <laughs> good. I'm getting tight. I'm banging my hand. Shh, shh, relax. That show was just so good. Like, it, it maybe it lacked a little representation here and there. Never watched it. You need. I'm about to go watch it again after talking about it. I'm about to go start it again because that show is just so good. And I'm so mad that it's canceled. Ugh, but anyway, <laughs> thank you, Carla. Go watch Teenage Bounty Hunter, 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 Hunters, Hunters for Carla, and go watch uh, Grand Army for Tali. Yeah, yeah. You know, we just help us out. But also, there's also different movies and shows you can watch where it talks about you know, things that have happened that are factual. Like, When They See Us is on Netflix and and that series. Mm, I cried when I watched that. You know what? Trigger warning. If you can't watch it, we understand. Because as a Black person watching it, I'm triggered. It was hard. To this day, triggered. You know, Netflix trying to get with the times and whatever. They got like a whole black section going on, and you can see all these documentaries. I recommend Thirteen. I watched it at um, yes, I watched uh, it in middle school. I watched it at a summer program, and my eyes have been open to well, my eyes have always been open to the injustice in this world, but my eyes have been just clear, just a little bit more by Thirteen. And if anyone wants to talk about it, I got my facts. I'm ready. Hands down. The factual things are probably just as important as the fictional things. Because we talked yeah. about this. We talked about how, you know, it's so it's pretty good to depict, like, the real-life struggles and things that, you know, specifically in this situation, when they see us, is about the exonerated five who were uh, charged with, I think, raping a woman in Central Park years ago. This was like back in the 80s or 90s, I want to say, possibly. But um, so I think that was just a really good, that was many examples of the real. But then we want to get into the fictional. We want to see happier, like getting past that, living life without having, you know, it's just. Uh. Yeah, you know, and that's important to, um understand but before we move along i i need to backtrack because i finally remembered the name of the show i was talking about it's called ashley garcia genius in love and they canceled it they canceled it and i this show focused on this high school girl she's like super smart like she works for nasa i think and you know she's She's missed out on all the funs of high school, you know, like a first boyfriend, a little keen say, you know, prom. And they were giving that to her. It was a girl being happy, you know, and it was representation for a lot of people and they canceled it. So um, was, was this Netflix? It was I, Netflix, wasn't it? I hate to say it, but it was Netflix. Ooh, Netflix. Oh, OK. But I mean, I'm adding that, that to my list. Yeah, but I definitely recommend. It's like really like family hearty. I'm I'm really more about like the family. I'm I'm a child in spirit, so I really like the family. Girl, you're still a child, not in spirit. In reality, I'm a child. I'm right there with you. (laughs) Yeah, me and Carla are children, so we like our little family heart. You know, we're mature though. We're mature children. Don't give them the wrong image. Of course, but um, you know, that leads to like an important discussion, like. A lot of the things we subscribe to, a lot of the things we're watching, we have to be really mindful because if we are in this generation and if we want to bring that forward to the next generation where we're like representation matters, we need to see these people on our screen, it's going to take some sacrifice. And again, we're not telling you cancel your Netflix subscriptions or your Hulu subscriptions or any of that stuff. We're just telling you guys, be mindful about what you watch because a lot of the things you watch 
a lot of the things are profit based based on viewers watching and right. fans watching and what's happening. So you know, if there's a new show that portrays minorities and people that's not that doesn't look like you maybe you should take some time to watch it because that could really profit some people that could really benefit I don't know younger younger people that are watching and are like I want to see this and even like for little kids I know we didn't give a lot of things for little kids but I know there's a show on Cartoon Network called Craig of the Creek I might be wrong but it's had some really good black representation and I just it's important to watch things that just don't like sometimes it's fine to watch things that you can relate to but I also think that sometimes we have to watch other things that are important to other people because they need that representation too don't be selfish not only that but I feel like you yourself have something to gain from watching that because you know it's you know you're taking a step back from the real world and I think from watching something like that you can really learn a lot about a different culture if it's represented well, you can really learn a lot about a different culture, um, you know, a different community. And I think you gain substance from that too, which yeah. I can say I have from watching different shows. I've definitely learned a lot about different cultures um, and just, just how things work for different people because I'm not, I don't represent everybody. Yeah. And I myself, Tali and I, we both have like a lot to learn from different people too. And so I think that just watching those shows has helped me a lot, gaining a lot of different substance. And so I think that not only watch it for other people, but watch it for yourself too, because I think that you'll learn a lot from that experience. And, you know, and if it's not representation and if it's not right, I always say this in the podcast, but do your research, talk to people. And we have seen that when a collective group of people are fighting to go against something that usually usually we win because we know it's not right and when this is gonna sound cliche but when one or two people are standing together and there's a whole group is there's bound to be change so me and Carla wanted to do this episode we wanted this to be our start of the series because I think it's important like I said in the last episode it's really the representation for me and I need the representation to keep going for me for my siblings after me, for the people in front of me, and for everyone else who's coming, because it's important for us. It's important for me to see that representation every single where I go. And I also want to say real quick, sorry, I know we talked about it a lot, but it's not only representation, like, actually on screen, but it's also representation for the writers, the people who are, I want Black people telling Black stories. I want, you know, trans people telling trans stories. I feel like the problem where all of this gets lost in translation is when you have a white person telling what they think a black person goes through. And so that's where things get lost in translation. And so if we're going to have representation on screen, we need that representation also behind the scenes. Definitely. Which, you know, Shonda Rhimes, I'm a big fan. If you ever, for some reason, listen to this podcast, I don't know how. Or, you know, I'm not going to say why, because we are excellent podcasters. I'd like to say for our fifth episode. But Donna Rhimes, if you ever listen to this, you know, I don't agree with all of your Grey's Anatomy decisions, but big respect to you. Big respect for what you've done. I, you know, and Grey's Anatomy is not really one of those shows I would categorize as representation. While it does have representation, you know, it's really more for the drama. But I wanted to give a shout out to Shonda Rhimes because my she- relationship with Shonda Rhimes is similar to my relationship with Netflix. We got beef, but I appreciate her. No, Shonda Rhimes, if you're ever listening to this, I don't have beef with you. I have respect. Speak for yourself. I got respect and I got beef. I would love to be a patient on Grey's Anatomy. I would really, I would <laughs> be love, on Grey's Anatomy. I would love to be a patient on Grey's Anatomy. Bring that and, Haitian and- representation to Grey's Anatomy. Oh. Honestly, Shonda Rhimes, just email me. We'll work on it. (laughs) That's all we have for you today. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm Tali. I'm Carla. And that's That's on Poppin' 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 Poppin